What's up guys, it is Watch Crisp back with another review video. Today we're taking a look at Etienne and this is their T02. It's a watch with an engine turned dial that is also enameled. However, it is very affordable considering. It actually looks a lot more expensive than it actually is. So let's flip the camera and take a look at a watch with an engine turned dial that is also enameled, the Etienne T02. So here it is, this is the Etienne T02 in, I believe this is the blue color. There's two different blue colors. I'm not sure which one I have. There's a, I believe an ice blue color and then a regular blue color. Uh, this might even be the green. I can't tell the difference between all three of them. They're very subtle differences between the colors of the dials. However, all of the dials are executed really really well and that's kind of the point of this brand kind of the point of this watch you're getting a cnc engine turned dial and then on top of that they're doing a hand enameling so there's this process that they are using the same process that brands like fabergé use so uh, that is done by hand it's a multiple layer process where they get the color of the dial i'll do plenty of close-ups of the dial because if you are interested in this watch the reason why you would buy this watch is because of the dial and the movement. This has a great movement inside uh, used by much higher end brands and also obviously micro brands as well, but very uncommonly used by micro brands these days. But the dial here is probably the most important aspect. You have these beautiful hands. You do not get a second hand. You do not get a date. And that is definitely intentional. The hands are a high polish sort of a black mirror polish. Then you have two levels to the dial. There is a cutout portion that is in a steel. So that is that area on the outside. That's basically the minute and hour track. That is a sandwich portion of the dial for lack of a better term. It has the name of the brand right there at six o'clock and that is it. And the rest of the dial is that CNC engine turned portion. So essentially that's the bottom plate of the dial. And then you have that sandwich portion for the top. Really beautiful dial, and obviously if you want something with a guilloche pattern, something that is engine turned, you're going to pay a lot of money for it. So the CNC route is obviously a lot cheaper, and it still looks amazing. There are a few brands out there doing this currently, however, not many going this route. A lot of them are pressed. CNC does cost a little bit more than a pressed dial. And then of course, a hand engine turn dial very expensive from brands like RGM and here in America at least, of course, Breguet, and there are tons of other ones doing it, but they charge you a lot of money for it. So if you want the look, but you don't want the price tag, this is a very good option. And I mentioned the movement. The movement on this watch is an ETA 7001. It's actually very nicely finished. And I say this is somewhat of a rare movement for a micro brand to use because they are number one, hard to get. Also, there are much higher end brands actually using this movement currently in different forms. So this is actually a very nice movement uh, that I love to see in this watch. I'm very happy that they actually put a display case back. It's a small movement. Obviously, it's not a giant movement, but I think it looks at home on this watch. And let's do quick measurements. This is around a 40 millimeter watch. So it's around 39 millimeters, so 38.9 millimeters. Thickness on here, really thin because of that movement. You do get two sapphire crystals, so 8.4, 8.5 millimeters thick, which is not a thick watch. And then the lug to lug on here is just at, let's see, 46.4 millimeters. And you do have an unsigned crown that is 5.3 millimeters. So a very thin watch. Obviously, because of that movement, you do have a screwed in case back. I do want to mention that. Uh, I believe you get 50 meters of water resistance. If I am wrong, I will put a comment down below. Uh, but as I mentioned, you have a sapphire crystal on the front and back, which is also really nice. Really nice strap on here. This is sort of a strap that matches the dial. The only thing that I think lets this down a little bit is the buckle. It's, I think, like a generic press buckle. It is signed. Uh, if this was a nicer buckle, that would be uh, more in line with the case. The case itself is really nice as well. Uh, very straightforward design. Uh, it is polished on the top, so the bezel is polished, the top of the lugs polished, then you have brushing on the side. 
basically on both sides. That's really it. The crown is polished on the edge. That is it. So a very straight forward case, uh, but obviously not such a straightforward dial. So a lot of attention goes into this dial. So I think it kind of makes sense. Price on this is $1,450. Uh, and I think they limit this, or this one might be limited to 50. It could be even less than that. Uh, I think this is limited to 50 pieces somewhere in that range. That is not a lot of watches. Uh, they sold out of their first series. This is their second series. Their first series had a different pattern on the dial or a slightly different pattern on the dial. Uh, this is their second watch, so a, a little bit different from their first series. Very quickly, I'm gonna throw it on my wrist. I'll show you what I am wearing, and then we'll wrap up the video because, of course, this is a dress watch, so it does not get loom. Today, I'm wearing my Neo Vintage Crador or Credor, whatever you want to call it. This is a chronograph powered by a 6S mechanical movement. I really love vintage and neo vintage chronographs uh, that are complicated. This has a uh, power reserve. I'm just a sucker for watches like these. I really love the bracelet on here. Just a cool watch. This is just a pleasure to wear. It's 39 millimeters, it's really thin. Uh, you don't have a very long lug to lug. This would wear well on most wrists. And the one thing I always like to bring up with watches like this, the $1,500 price point, so $1,450 or whatever they're charging, it definitely looks like a more expensive watch than that. So you could see the dial, the setup of the uh, of the dial, the fact that it doesn't have a second hand, the fact that it doesn't have a date. Obviously, they really wanted to pay attention to the dial and make it extremely symmetrical, uh, which I really like. Some people would not buy this because it doesn't have the date. I think it's really, really good that it doesn't have the date. Anyway, guys, there you go. I think this has a really special dial, a very special movement. And I think for the price around $1450, that is not bad considering what you're getting here. And considering that this watch looks way more than that price tag, uh, it looks like a lot more money was put into this watch than the $1450. Uh, and that's partially because it is CNC. So that is actually a good thing if you want the look, but you don't wanna pay the price. So. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of this watch? What do you think of the fact that they're using CNC? There are a few brands out there, like I have mentioned, that are doing this. Most of those charge more money for their watch than this brand. So uh, definitely something to keep in mind if you are interested in it. Uh, definitely check out the link. I will put a link down in the description below. Anyway, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It's super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. I'll catch you guys in the next video.